Let us stand. Good morning, Edisto Fort. Good morning, Edisto Fort. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is your house. Father, come and dwell. This is your house, a holy house of prayer. Where the lost and the lonely bring their burdens and their cares. This is your house, Father, come. Come and dwell. This is to give more than we desire or deserve. Help us so to seek that we may truly find, so to ask that we may joyfully receive, so to knock that the door of your mercy may be open to us. Through Jesus Christ our Savior, amen. amen. Let us continue these services by singing our opening hymn, Onward Christian Soldiers. Victory. 
of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He is sitting into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then to come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to Jesus promised. 
Christ, He'll take care of me. Jesus promised He'll take care of me. Oh, how marvelous it is! Oh, how wonderful it is! Jesus promised, Jesus promised He'll take care of me. Oh, how marvelous it is! Oh, how marvelous it is! Jesus promised, Jesus promised He'll take care of me. I don't have to worry, I don't have to worry about the things ahead. promise we hold on to that he will take care of us Jesus said on one occasion it is more blessed to give than to receive he says give and it shall be given back to you a good measure pressed down shaken together and running over for the measure you give will be the measure you receive because God loves what let us stand as we render unto God that which belongs to God. Bless thou the gifts our hands have brought. Bless thou the words our heart have planned. Our gifts of faith, the will of the heart. The rest, O oh God, is in thy hand. You may be seated. Thank you. 
praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all love we ever may hold. Praise, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait. I will trust in you. I will trust in you, the Lord. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait. I, I will, will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. The Lord is. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait. I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in 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 you. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord.
from me now is your time as I decrease you increase oh my father send your preacher in other words in other words shine on me shine on me Lord let your light from your lighthouse Shine on me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Those of you who have your Bibles, I want to invite your attention to Psalm 73, and I want to lift up verses 27 through 28. And I will also ask that you read the entire Psalm, Psalm 73, when you get home. It says, indeed, those who are far from you will perish. You put an end to those who are false to you. But for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord my refuge to tell of all your works. I want to tag this text with the topic, Staying Close to the Lord. Staying close to the Lord. My sisters and brothers, in this life, 
it is easy to become distracted and distant from the Lord and the things of God. There is much in life that runs in an adverse opposite way that sends one down the path of moving further and further away from God. God who is the source of our strength and the strength of our lives. Not all at once, but little by little. Life has a way of pulling us further and further away from the Lord. Because in life, distractions come, and these distractions are designed to get us to turn our focus and attention away from the Lord, which puts us at a distance with God. The distractions that I'm speaking of can best be described as a diverting of the heart mm -hmm. away from God. Amen. A diverting of the heart away from God. You see, moving away from God is not a physical separation, but it's a matter of the heart. Because we know that the heart of God's people is the reference point. The Bible tells us man looks at the outside, but God looks at the heart. And when God sees a shift in our hearts, it is an indication that we are moving away from God. Y'all stick with me. I'm going somewhere. You see, the heart is the point of reference because Jesus put it this way. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, we've been designed that our hearts turn towards that which we treasure, that which we value or place emphasis on for our lives. What our heart follows, our focus and actions will soon respond to that which has our heart. Yes, sir. Amen. This is why the Bible tells us as children of God to keep our hearts. For many people, they believe that to keep their heart is an effort to guide their, guard their hearts from suffering emotional pain to keep someone or something from hurting them emotionally to guard or to keep one's heart is greater than you guarding your heart from Bobo trying to keep some joker from hurting your heart busting your heart But to keep one's heart is to avoid from being distracted or diverted away from God. Proverbs 4 and 23 tells us, keep your heart with all diligence from out of it flows the issues of life. When we fail to keep our hearts, we fail to stay focused on God and we become distracted. And we can easily drift away from the Lord. That's one of the challenges of this pandemic. So many of God's children have drifted away. Hiding behind quarantining. And have forgotten about God. Drifted away. Well, this is an example we find in the Bible in this 73rd division of Psalm. This was the plight of the psalmist Aesop. Aesop found himself distracted and his life drifting away from the Lord. The important aspect to, to, to realize as stated in the beginning of this psalm is that 
we can know of God's goodness and still drift away from God. Did you hear me? We can know of God's goodness, know God is good, and still, as that old song say, float on, float on, float on away from God. Aesop begins this psalm by declaring, truly God is good to the upright, to those who are pure in heart. This statement had to be birthed out of his personal experience with God. He confirms the truth that God is good and God had been good to him in his life when his heart was focused on God. Now the truth is that God is good all the time and God is good when we are focused on him and God is good when we are not focused on him because our focus don't change God. But it will impact how we experience the goodness of the Lord. When we are focused on God, God goodness abides in our lives and when we move away from God, we forfeit the goodness because we are looking for it elsewhere. But then the psalmist goes on to confess his distraction. He makes it clear in verse 2 and 3. He said, but as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. Lord have mercy. For I was envious of the arrogant. And I saw the prosperity of the wicked. The psalmist informs us that he became distracted by looking at other people. <coughs> and allowing envy to invade his heart. Because he wanted it for himself. He lost focus. And his feet almost stumbled. And his steps nearly slipped. His focus on self and his desires to have what others had. Caused his heart to start chasing at the people. And moving away from God. <coughs> Now, the truth of the matter is that none of us can be judgmental of Aesop. Because at some point in time in our lives, we too have had a wandering heart. Warning for our lives what we have seen take place in the lives of others. This envy can cause you to go chasing after it and take you away from what you know in your heart. As the words of the psalmist declared in this psalm in the beginning, truly God is good. You know God is good. So why are you chasing after what you see in other folk lives? The challenge for us is to keep this truth before us. That God is good. And we got to ask ourselves in times of distractions, do we want better for our lives greater than God wants better for us? You can't want it better than God wants it for you. Because the trick of the enemy is to get us to believe that God is holding something from you. And when God has declared he would withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly. So the first sign that you may be moving away from God is when your feet stumble and your steps begin to slip. This is a sign you moving away from God because God has promised in his word that when you are close to him, this is the one thing you will not experience. 
God promised in Proverbs 4 and 12 that when you stay close and follow his instructions, God promises this, when you walk, your steps will not be hampered. And if you run, you will not stumble. And the Bible speaks of our steps and feet. It is referring to how we progress in life. But it also speaks to having balance in our lives. When you stumble, you've lost your balance. When you slip, you lost your balance. And a life that is stumbling and slipping is one that is moving away from God and has entered into shaky territory. You see, when you move away from God, you become unsure because you're chasing after something that can't sustain or hold you. Therefore, your footing and your foundation is on shifting sand. But when we stay true to God, when we stay true to what God has called us, to do, we will be stumble proof. Lord, have mercy. Second Peter 1 and 10 tells us, therefore, brothers and sisters, be all the more eager to confirm your call and election, for if you do this, you will never stumble. And the Bible also tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Tell somebody, watch your step. All right. The next evidence that the psalmist gives us that indicates you're moving from away from God deals with your worship. In verse 17, the psalmist informs us that after he could make sense of the things that he was pursuing. He was envious of the wicked and their physical prosperity, but when he tried to make sense of it, it wearied him because he discovered that the things of this world can never satisfy the heart. So he informs us that he couldn't find balance. He couldn't find clarity for his life. And he was shaky. He was stumbling. Uh, he was slipping uh, until he went to the sanctuary. <clears throat> until he began to worship. That's when his eyes opened. Now, we can attest to that, can't we? You've been in states and places in your life during the week where you're slipping and you're stumbling and look like you can't find balance in your life. But when you come into the house of the Lord, you hear a word, you get inspiration, and your eyes are open and you find yourself standing on a firm foundation because when you worship God, you come in the presence of of the Lord. And in his presence there's fullness of joy. That's why the enemy is trying to trick God's people during this pandemic to neglect your worship. To neglect being in God's presence. Because our worship keeps us. In the presence of the Lord. And when you're in God's presence. How many of you know. That when you're in the presence of God. That's the right place to be. You see because when you neglect worship. You drift away from God. When you fail to come into the presence. Of God through praise and seeking God. 
with all your heart, it'll create dry places in your soul. That's why you'll see some of these members come back to church and they sitting down there. We having a good time and they sitting there like a knot on the log because their soul is dry. They have moved away from worship. Therefore, they can't get with the program because they have neglected uh, being in the presence of the Lord. How many of you know you got to stay hungry for God? You got to be a God chaser. You got to be as the psalmist declares the deer panthers for the water brook. So my soul panthers for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? See, if you're thirsty for something other than God, then you're not close to God like you ought to be, and your worship is wasting away. Check your worship. And then finally, the psalmist concludes that being close to the Lord is better than the distractions that took him away from God. Because after all is said and done, God is the only one we really have in the end. God, he called himself stupid for allowing his heart to wander, to allow his soul to become bitter by envy. But after his worship set him in balance, he found his way by declaring in verses 25 and 26, he said, whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire other than you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Then he goes on to say in verse 28, but for me, it is good to be near God. Yeah. I have made the Lord the God of my refuge mm -hmm. and to tell of all his works. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you decide on a matter, on. you will discover that there is nothing yeah. that compared to the love of the Lord. Because when you stay close to the Lord, you will discover that even in your weakness, how many of you know that God will be your strength? Because God is the strength of our hearts, and he is our portion forever. God is our strength, and God is our source. And when you hold on to that fact, you know that whatever you need, God will supply. All you got to do is stay close. If you need healing, you need to stay close. If you need joy, you need to stay close. If you need a way made uh, out of no way, uh, you need to get close to the Lord. Uh, if you need a breakthrough, uh, if you need a miracle, uh, I don't know what you need, uh, but I know where you need to be. Uh, you need to be close, uh, close, uh, close to the Lord. Uh, when you worship, uh, you're drawing close. Uh, when you praise him, uh, you're drawing closer when you read your word you're going closer just to be close to the Lord is where we need to be because when you are close you will discover that God will be strong in your life Woo. when you draw close when you stay close, 
you will discover that if it had not been for the Lord uh, who was on your side, come on, look at your life. Do a reflection. If it had not been for the Lord, you would have lost your mind a long time ago. If it had not been for the Lord, you would not be here today. But God, uh, woo! God made a way out of no way. And every day, God keeps us. Every day, God blesses us. And let me ask you this. Who wouldn't want to be close to a God that's good? Come on, put your hands together. Just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, if you please. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. You know that I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Oh, singing just a closer walk, a closer walk, a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Just a close walk with me. Grant Just a close walk with me. Jesus, Just a close walk with me. 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 Perhaps, perhaps, someone here today, you want to draw closer to the Lord. Perhaps you felt yourself wandering away from God. You can draw near to him. Number one, by giving your life to Christ and inviting the Lord into your heart and asking God to save your soul. You can do that today. Come. Or perhaps you want to be in the church, join the church. We here at Edisto Fork, would love to have you. I want to be your pastor. Come and get in the church. Or you desire prayer? 
How many of you know prayer still changes things? And as we pray, and we approach the throne of grace and mercy, we pray. We pray this faith for the state of our young people and the safety of our children at these schools. And we're praying, God, that God will move and, and take some of these guns out of our young people's hands. And then we ask that you pray for Sister Cornelia Bovan, who lost her son last night, Larry. Keep her in your prayers. It's always tough when a parent have to bury a child. could keep Sister Bovan in your prayers. We ask that you remember in your prayers the Reverend Jesse Jackson and his wife Jacqueline Bofer in the hospital battling COVID. And we got to continue to pray for the state of this pandemic. And I beg of you, if you've not gotten your shot, get your shot. Don't allow the foolishness of those who don't have a lick of scientific knowledge to sway you. To sway you. You don't know what's in the food you eat, but you eat it. You don't know what they fixed because you don't see them in the kitchen. But you trust them and here you are acting crazy over a shot. You go to the, the pharmacy and you get a prescription. You don't know if it's the right one, but you take it. And here you now all of a sudden, you, you, you fighting against this. We, we, come on, we're better than this. And this is greater than you as an individual, is you protecting those who are around you. Let us pray. Father God, in the strong name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we give you praise for reminding us, God, to keep our hearts right towards you, to help us to stay close to you and not get distracted by the things of this world not get distracted by the foolishness of men. Don't let the glitter and glitz of life take us down the wrong road. But help us to hold on to your hand. Your unchanging hand. Help us to stay in worship and Help us to not stumble nor slip. Help us to stay near. That's where we want to be. Because when we are near you, everything we need in life, you will provide. You said you'll supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And for that, Father, we want to say thank you. Now, Lord, move in this place. Move like only you can. 
continue to bless, continue to comfort, continue, God, to heal. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Bless our schools and our children and our teachers and administrators and Oh God, be a fence all around them. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> we pray in the midst of this pandemic that you will open the eyes of people and let them know that they need to get their vaccination shot. Move in the land. We will be ever careful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor. This is our prayer. We raise this petition in no other name than the sweetest name we know. It's in the strong name of Jesus we pray. The people of God said amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We thank God for all of you present here today and those of you who are watching us online. We pray that the word of God has touched you in such a way that you are better, the, you are the better for it. And we thank God for you. I've got a couple of cards says thank you so much to my church family. A note to thank you for your thoughtfulness and to let you know it really means a lot. Please keep me in your prayers. This comes from Brother Joe and Sister Agnes Martin. You're wonderful. I'm so thankful for all the warmth, care, and love that God put into your heart. God has given me a great gift to the Edisto Church family and for the beautiful gift of having you in my life. Thank you for all the love and support giving during this difficult time. This comes from the Curry family and they gave a $250 memorial offering in memory of Sandra Curry. Amen. Amen. Keep praying. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Because in the midst of it all, God is all we got. And guess what? God is all we need. Amen. Amen. There is a prayer vigil at 5 o'clock today. The Orangeburg Wilkinson's campus, sponsored by the Orangeburg District, the United Methodist Church, uh, a number of pastors have come together to offer a prayer vigil uh, in the midst of what's been taking place. And so be prayerful, and uh, you are welcome to attend. That's at 5 p.m. today. Amen. All right, let us stand. From our house to your house. May God bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Give you his peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Stay close to God. Now, henceforth and forevermore. And the people of God said amen. 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 And amen. amen.